Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today I wanted to talk about a new study that discusses the idea of possibly discovering a DNA molecule from an ancient dinosaur. So basically we're talking about real life Jurassic Park here. Let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and if it's actually something we should be concerned about and welcome to what the math. So as you can probably imagine, like so many other boys when I was younger, I was totally obsessed with dinosaurs. I also thought Jurassic Park was like the best movie ever. So whenever I hear about discoveries about dinosaurs, I am always too excited to actually share this with everyone. So a recent paper that you see right here and that came out not so long ago, discovered something unusual inside a skull of a baby dinosaur. And as you can probably tell from the title, that something unusual was very likely some sort of a remnant of the ancient DNA. Now, this is kind of surprising, and mostly because we've never thought DNA could last that long. Pretty much all of the previous studies determined that within about 7 million years, most of the DNA would disappear completely, it would disintegrate. And in this study from 2012, the scientists discovered that a typical DNA molecule has a half-life of about 521 years. In other words, in about 520 years, half of DNA disappears completely. And then wait 520 more years and another half of it disappears again. And based on these calculations, it takes about 7 million years for the entire DNA strand to essentially completely disintegrate. Mostly because, as they discovered in this study, DNA molecules are just very unstable. Pretty much as soon as the organism is no longer alive, the DNA inside the cell starts disintegrating almost instantly. So this is why DNA is actually really complex and also really difficult to maintain molecule. So in that sense, discovering such an ancient DNA is really really surprising. But the most important question right now is, what sort of a dinosaur is it? Is it some sort of a ancient meat-eating super scary looking T-Rex thing or the super armored yet very very popular with kids Triceratops or one of the biggest creatures to ever exist, Aparosaurus? Well, unfortunately, no. It's actually a pretty boring one. In some sense, it's somewhat equivalent to, I guess, a cow of the Mesozoic era. It's this little guy. It's known as Hypocrosaurus. Well, as you can probably imagine, not the most popular with kids dinosaur. As a matter of fact, I did not actually know about this until I read the paper. So this particular dinosaur, whose name means near the highest lizard, which basically refers to its height, uh, meaning that some scientists back in the days when it was discovered thought it was almost the same height as the T-Rex. Although it really isn't. It's much smaller, it's only about 9 meters in length and is essentially a typical herbivore that most likely lived in large groups and walked around Earth eating all sorts of grass. As a matter of fact, we know quite a lot about its teeth. It had a lot of teeth in its mouth, up to about a hundred as you can see right there, and it was able to replace them pretty quickly. We also discovered that one of these dinosaurs was attacked by some sort of a T-Rex-like dinosaur because it had tooth marks on its uh, bones. So basically, in a nutshell, it was just a typical herbivore walking around minding its own business. If one day we're able to Jurassic Park our way into creating one of these dinosaurs, this is probably not going to be the most exciting specimen. But let's talk a little bit more about the discovery of this DNA. So it actually came from within the skull of a, an adolescent or smaller dinosaur, a younger dinosaur, and the DNA molecule was obviously not an entire strand, it was just pieces of it, just these small pieces of chromosomes and what seemed to be nucleotides and small isolated proteins from which there is almost no way for us to recreate anything. So no Jurassic Park, at least not today. But nevertheless, it is really interesting uh, to discover something so ancient and something that we thought would be completely gone within about 7 million years. This particular specimen is about 70 million years, which really defies our understanding of how quick DNA disintegrates and may actually uh, create a lot of new questions and a lot of new studies trying to investigate what exactly happened here. And also because this field of archaeological biochemistry is still in its infancy, there's basically no way for us to know where this DNA came from. As a matter of fact, one of the previous papers that came out only a month prior to this one, the discovery of DNA uh, of basically a triceratops looking dinosaur 
came from bacteria. Bacteria that seemed to have made its home inside of the bones, inside of the fossils, and possibly survived there for quite a long time. So the possibility of this being some sort of a contamination from another organism currently is pretty high. So we might be seeing DNA, but it's not necessarily from the dinosaur itself. And this is not even the first report of DNA from dinosaurs. Back in 1994, right after the Jurassic Park came out, there was another report that suggested DNA existed in another sample. With thorough research and with follow-up studies, scientists discovered that there's really nothing in there and it was just a false alarm. So even though in this particular paper they did seem to discover some sort of DNA using modern techniques, we still need quite a lot of follow-up studies to really confirm if this is true or not. And following the confirmations, we need to try to investigate if the DNA is indeed from the dinosaur itself, and if there is something we can do with it, possibly study it, or if it's from a bacteria or some other type of contamination. But hypothetically, let's just say that this is from a dinosaur. What can we possibly do with just little pieces of DNA here and there? Well, obviously we're not going to create Jurassic Park out of this. As a matter of fact, you would need an entire molecule and it's almost impossible to discover this, even if you look inside the prehistoric mosquitoes that may have sucked on the blood of dinosaurs, like they did in Jurassic Park. Here, the DNA would also disintegrate. Even inside the amber, the DNA molecule will still have the same half-life. But nevertheless, discovering pieces of DNA may actually help us discover a lot more about dinosaurs and discover their features, like for example, color of their fur and possibly if there was any feathers or fur on their uh, skin. We can also possibly discover other features that could be similar to animals we have today. And all of this has already actually been done with other animals like legendary mammoths that we've discovered quite a lot of. These animals used to be everywhere, but approximately 4,000 years ago, the last one mysteriously vanished um, in northern Russia. Actually, the mystery there is not really a mystery. Today we think that what happened to them was that they eventually became too genetically homogenous, and basically there was a lot of inbreeding between mammoths living on a certain island in northern Russia, and because of this, they eventually became too weak to survive on the island and perished due to the weather changes. But because we've discovered so many different DNA molecules from the mammoths, today we're able to recreate quite a lot of features that they most likely had, and we even have enough DNA molecules to technically try to clone one of the mammoths using uh, similar animals, like for example elephants. Although there's obviously the question of ethics here, and also the idea of, well, should we be even doing this? I mean, the series Jurassic Park clearly shows us that when we try to bring back the animals that shouldn't be around anymore, things don't always go well. But when it comes to Hypercosaurus, the somewhat unknown yet somewhat exciting now dinosaur, it will probably take a few months and possibly a few years to discover if the DNA is truly from this dinosaur. And if it is from this dinosaur, we might end up learning about other features from these animals that we never knew about before. So it's actually kind of exciting to combine the science of biochemistry with the science of archaeology in trying to discover what really happened to these dinosaurs and what they were like back then. And honestly, I really hope the scientists look through the skulls of other dinosaurs. For all we know, maybe they'll discover more DNA of like a T-Rex, wouldn't that be awesome? But until we discover more, that's kind of unfortunately it. There will be more follow-up studies and we might actually know more about the DNA from dinosaurs in the next few years, but for now we don't really know anything else. It's definitely exciting though, and I mean, yeah, Jurassic Park would be kind of cool. I mean, maybe unethical, but still cool. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space sciences and, in some sense, dinosaurs because I'm sure there will be more dinosaur videos coming in the future. Maybe consider supporting the channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description below. And space out, and as always, bye-bye. Hypracosaurus. Hypracosaurus. There is no way I'm going to remember that. I am sure as soon as I close this window, I'm going to forget this name.
By the way, did you know that they use these little crests on their heads for potential communication and possibly in mating as well? You can actually see that it allowed them to create all sorts of sounds and it's very likely that these dinosaurs were pretty loud. So I guess it wasn't so boring after all. Well, Hypercosaurus, I guess maybe I will remember your name after all.